The United States frequently restricts chip suppliers from shipping to Chinese companies, does not allow the most advanced semiconductor equipment to be sold to mainland manufacturers, and prevents the rise of chips from Chinese companies. However, the U.S. restricts not only Chinese companies, but also South Korea, which has built factories in the mainland, and Taiwan's chip giants are also subject to restrictions. Their mainland branch factories are also unable to purchase the most advanced semiconductor equipment, and even have to obtain a license from the United States to maintain operations. Seeing that the license is about to expire, the U.S. media reported that they intend to exempt the three giants from shipping. The Biden team do not seek to decouple from China. In October 2022, the United States will upgrade its restrictions on China's chip industry. 14 nanometers chip equipment, 3 nanometers chip design EDA industrial software, and large and small advanced process chips will all be shipped. As long as suppliers who use American technology need to abide by the rules, they can only continue to do business in the Chinese market if they obtain a license from the United States. This rule has a far-reaching impact, and it has disadvantages rather than benefits to the globalization of chips, and American companies have also fallen into operating difficulties. Perhaps the United States also knows that the restrictive measures will have adverse effects, and many allies' companies are also involved. It is difficult to explain if the matter becomes a big deal. So the United States gave South Korea's Samsung Electronics, SK Hynix, and Taiwan's TSMC a one-year exemption period. They are allowed to continue to operate their mainland branch factories without being restricted by the rules. By October this year, the exemption period will expire. Although there are still four months to go, if you do not prepare in advance, the operations of these three chip giants in the mainland market will suffer a huge impact in the future. Especially Samsung Electronics which manufactures a large number of memory chips in its mainland branch factory. If the mainland branch factory stops, Samsung's global memory chip production capacity will be affected and the industry's competitiveness will be greatly weakened. However, things may usher in a turning point. According to news from the US media, Wall Street Journal, the United States intends to exempt the shipments of the three giants and allow chip companies in South Korea and Taiwan to maintain their business in the mainland. Suddenly, if the news is true and the United States does intend to exempt it, it will naturally be a good thing for the three chip giants. Mainland China is a market they cannot lose. Whether it is chip manufacturing or chip sales, or even purchasing the required components from China, they need to maintain close cooperation with the mainland. Losing the immunity of the United States will prevent them from successfully entering the mainland market, especially for South Korean companies, whose decades of factory layout in the mainland may end in failure. Of course, with the immunity of the United States, everything is easy to say. The exemption for chip giants is not in line with the usual style of the United States. What caused the Biden team to change their minds? From the perspective of economic development, the United States cannot do without the Chinese economy. According to U.S. Treasury Secretary Yellen, a complete separation from the Chinese economy would be disastrous for both the United States and China. Therefore, the attitude of the Biden team is not to seek decoupling from China. The impact of semiconductors on economic development is too great. 
It is the basis of various high-tech and has important strategic significance in promoting economic development. The economic development of the United States is difficult to describe in one word. Inflation has always plagued the United States. A large number of Americans are facing unemployment, and companies are laying off workers and running into difficulties. If the U.S. hastily decouples from the Chinese economy and leaves no room for retreat at the semiconductor level, the U.S. itself will not even think about it. It just so happens that chip manufacturers in South Korea and Taiwan need to go to the mainland to do business and the chips they make in the mainland will also feed back the economic development of the United States. In addition, from the perspective of the interests of allies, although the United States can ignore the interests of allies and only care about implementing strict chip rules, even if it sacrifices its allies, the United States can remain indifferent. But doing so will make the United States completely isolated and helpless. No matter how strong the United States is, it is impossible to lead all countries and let them do things for themselves. If the US does not leave room for things and insists on pushing allies' companies to a corner, it will stop playing with the US in the future. So the United States gave allied companies a certain range of exemptions so that they can continue to do business in the mainland market. South Korea has already criticized the United States and discussed restrictive measures with the United States many times to avoid completely losing the Chinese mainland market. The United States cannot ignore the words of these allies. After all, the United States is currently revitalizing the localization of chips and needs manufacturers from South Korea and Taiwan to build factories in the United States. Just like TSMC's high-end chip factory project in Arizona, the United States is expected to return the United States to its status as a major chip manufacturing country. Once TSMC is unable to develop its layout in the mainland, it is hard to guarantee that it will do something that will kill the fish and break the net. From the perspective of comprehensive economic development and the interests of allies, the United States has not made the matter unstoppable. It is a rational consideration for the United States to exempt chip giants from shipping. But it is not enough. This is a temporary fix for returning to the development of chip globalization, and the bell must be solved. Only when the United States completely liberalizes chip restrictions and corrects mistakes can the chip industry have a broad future. If you agree with the viewpoint of this video, please like it, welcome to Forward, leave a message and share.